The age of gaming handhelds having their glorious re-rise in prominence just keeps on coming strong right now with this morning's full reveal of the ROG Ally. If you have not heard of this gaming system before, this is Asus's answer and competitor to the Steam Deck. Uh, obviously, the Steam Deck is not the only PC gaming handheld out there. There are a lot that came out before the Steam Deck did. There are others that have been actively releasing with new ones coming out as well, like the ones from Aya Neo. But as far as PC handheld, it's coming from a brand name that has a lot of power behind it. Steam Deck is basically the one to beat right now. And that's exactly what the ROG Ally is looking to do. Real quick, I do want to shout out the pre-orders for this device are already available. I am planning on getting my hands on it and doing a lot more in-depth coverage uh, once I actually have it here. So if you want to make sure you see that, don't forget to subscribe. I just want to basically go over a lot of the stuff that was revealed this morning at the press conference, my thoughts on it, some of the upsides, downsides, drawbacks. I am going to touch on tech specs, but I don't really want to go full in on all that because while it's great to talk about those in concept, uh, I would much rather actually have a hands-on experience and talk about you know how it performs compared to other things. Uh, but there is some important parts of that to touch on. And I think the first thing I really want to talk about actually is how competitively priced this thing is. Look, it's certainly not cheap by any measure, but the RG Ally has two different models, a $600 and $700 one. And what's interesting about these compared to how Valve approached the Steam Deck is that the difference between these is not storage capacity, but rather performance. With the Steam Deck, you have three different models going from 400 to 650, with the cheapest model having the smallest storage size and the largest offering 512. And there are a couple little other bonuses they throw in, like having a carrying case in the higher end models, uh, and in the highest end models case, having an anti-glare screen. With the Asus ROG Ally, the key difference is the chipset. The cheaper model at $600 has a Ryzen Z1, while the more expensive $700 model offers a Ryzen Z1 Extreme, which they're promising is able to run major big budget AAA games at 1080p with solid frame rates. With both models, the lower and higher end ones, offering performance levels that are above what the Steam Deck currently offers. And what's interesting about this too is that it's not just in terms of the chipset and power there, but basically all the other surrounding features. The Steam Deck, for instance, has a 60 Hertz 720p display, whereas the Ally offers a seven inch screen that is 1080p with 120 Hertz refresh rate. Obviously, depending on what games you're playing and what the hardware is actually capable of determines how much you're gonna be pushing that resolution and frame rate. But ultimately, as long as it is a game that the hardware can handle, this means the ROG is gonna be offering a higher resolution experience with better pixel density and even smoother motion. It's also worth noting that both models, the cheaper and more expensive one, come with the same amount of storage, which is 512 gigabytes, the same amount as the most expensive Steam Deck. And that's what's really impressive to me about this whole thing is that, you know, based on all the specs and things that we were hearing about it, the fact that it was going for a higher resolution display with a higher refresh rate, I was really expecting this to be a, you know, noticeably higher price point. And again, not cheap by any means, but when the more affordable model is more powerful than the current Steam Deck and is 50 bucks cheaper while offering the same storage size, that is a really compelling argument. Now, there are some other features and things about the ROG Ally that I find really interesting uh, that also differentiate it from the Steam Deck. Uh, some of which I think actually you can argue are a little bit of give and take, but I think for a lot of people, they are gonna be a bit more appealing. Uh, one of which is its approach to operating system. The Steam Deck comes automatically with Valve's own Steam OS, though you can, of course, set it up with Windows if you prefer. You just have to take a couple extra steps to do that. Uh, whereas the ROG Ally is straight up a Windows 11 device right out the gate. Now, the benefit of that is that it does not tie you to any one particular platform. Uh, if you have games on Steam, along with having stuff from Blizzard, Epic Games, EA, or even Xbox, all of those things are gonna be things that can run on the hardware and not gonna be limited, which is one of the things that limits the Steam Deck if you're relying on just its base configuration. You're able to play all your Steam library, but if it's anything outside of that, or if it's something that makes use of certain additional features like anti-cheat, it's not gonna necessarily work on the system. There's always a compatibility game you're playing, which is not the case with the Ally. Now, I will say, in my opinion, one kind of trade-off and downside of this, and again, personal preference plays a really large role here. Uh, this does mean that this is a more traditional straight up PC in handheld mode and not necessarily something that is, you know, right away from its UI and interface, something that is a more traditional handheld experience. Part of the reason why the Steam Deck has SteamOS, aside from the fact that they obviously want you to rely more on their library primarily, is the fact that when you start the device up and everything, you are given a handheld console style experience with the UI. Whereas with the ROG Ally, you're gonna be launching Windows. Now, as part of remedying this, uh, the ROG Ally does come with some of Asus's own software with a new version of Armory Crate called Armory Crate SE. And the whole point of that is it's something that acts as a central hub for all of the gaming 
on this device. Basically, it'll scan for all the installed games you have across all the different platforms available, uh, and that's gonna be the way that you're able to launch a more traditional style handheld gaming UI so that you can scroll through your games, mess with settings, all that kind of good stuff, uh, including the ability to dive into some settings mid-game as well for doing things like adjusting controller style, performance settings, all that good stuff. What this means is that I think the Allies out of the box experience might end up being slightly more complex to use compared to the Steam Decks. Not to say that it actually is complex or difficult, it's just different compared to using something that is a dedicated handheld OS experience right out the gate. Now another feature they touched on that is something that the Steam Deck is not capable of that is also very interesting is the fact that it also offers eGPU support. Uh, while there have been some people that have messed around with finding ways to make an external GPU work with the Steam Deck, it's not something that's just a user-friendly, yeah, you just hook it up to one and you're good to go. And that is something the ROG Ally is offering, including having their own proprietary ones that you can pick up and buy, uh, coming at two very different price points uh, with a more affordable option at $800 and a significantly more expensive option offering an RTX 4090 at $2,000. The point of this is when it comes to using the ROG Ally in a docked experience, while well, you could certainly just rely on its own internal specs uh, and make use of things like AMD FSR to get a better looking resolution and performance while not hitting the frame rate too hard, an external GPU is gonna give you the option to just hook it up to that and get a desktop level experience so you can do things like hit way higher resolutions at 4K while maintaining great performance. It's just gonna cost you. Form-wise, while well, obviously I haven't had direct hands-on with, I will say that I like the look of the layout a little more too compared to how the Steam Deck did things. Steam Deck put everything up top as far as the uh, ABXY sticks and D-pad go. They're all lined up at the top so they can make room for the touch pads below. Uh, the ROG Ally looks like it's going with a slightly more traditional setup uh, where you have a pair of offset sticks. So you have the left side higher up and the right side lower down with a faceted style of D-pad similar to the ones on Xbox controllers, which is something we're gonna talk about in a little bit, and traditional domed ABXY buttons on the right-hand side as well. Uh, the reason I mentioned Xbox for the faceted D-pad thing is that while obviously this is an Asus device, uh, the presentation this morning really had a pretty heavy focus with Xbox, and it sounds like there is some degree of partnership going on here. A whole part of the morning demonstration, by the way, was just talking about the value of Xbox Game Pass, which is something that is appealing for a device like this. Because sure, we've talked previously about having remote play focused devices that allow you to use Game Pass, but this is actually a dedicated handheld that, yeah, you could use the cloud gaming stuff if you want, but you can also just make use of Game Pass directly natively on the device and install that library of games directly to its storage. In fact, they're pushing this concept so much that when you pick up an ROG Ally, it actually comes with a three month membership to Game Pass Ultimate. It does kind of give you a little bit of the vibe that if Xbox had a sort of designated handheld that they sponsor as being the you know main one for the Xbox platform, the ROG Ally is certainly showing some more support than other options out there. Obviously, I don't have any actual full review thoughts on the experience of using this thing yet because I don't have hands on with it. Uh, I am planning on grabbing one to review, but just based on what was shown at this presentation, it looks like this is going to be an extremely strong form of competition with the Steam Deck. Uh, as of right now, it is available for pre-order. The more expensive model is actually gonna be releasing sooner, coming out in the middle of June, whereas the cheaper model is currently listed for coming out sometime in quarter three of this year, so just a little bit later. As of right now, as I'm recording this video, pre-orders are still available on Best Buy. I don't know if that will be the case by the time I'm live. I'll have the link down below in the description if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, I definitely plan on covering this thing some more once I get my hands on it. So yeah, there's just some thoughts on what we learned about the ROG Ally this morning. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button, let me know, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you guys later. Hopefully with an ROG Ally in hand.